Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spot Convention with the Come From Art. We've made it through everything else. Now it's time to wrap things up with this week's Batman books. Kicking things off, we've got Batman Catwoman, The Gotham War, Red Hood, number one. So, this takes place before the point we left off at in uh, Catwoman. I believe last week's issue of Catwoman. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Catwoman has uh, managed to basically take most of many of uh, Gotham's henchmen and train them to be thieves, non-violent thieves, and they're good at it. They're they're good. There's been, for the most part, she informed the Bat family of this. Most of them have seemed to be hesitant, seem to be hesitant, trying to remain neutral. Uh, aside though from Jason Todd, the Red Hood, and Batman and Robin, Damian Wayne, Red Hood actually agreed with what with what Catwoman was doing. Batman and Robin, well, not so much. And so, the Gotham War. Red Hood is, in fact, working alongside Catwoman, though. So, anyways, our, the issue opens two weeks ago. Um, Red Hood is attempting to get information on Joker's whereabouts from a, uh, a former henchman, whom Catwoman saves, while also telling... Uh, Red Hood about the meeting that she's going, she's set up with uh, herself and the Bat family. Well, we, we've seen it. We know how the meeting went. So, fast forward to now, uh, Red Hood is training uh, former henchmen in, into being uh, members of Catwoman's crew. Include we focus on uh, three, uh, well, two henchmen, Bash and Simpson. They get fight training um, as well as you know, basically just learning new things. How to get, including how to get what you need without hurting people. Also teaching them, you know, fighting skills. Um, trying to get information on the Joker. He's trying to get information on the Joker, which is why he's even joined up. One of the uh, henchmen, Bash, was a uh, henchman of. Uh, Scarecrows once upon, a, once upon a time. After what uh, is deemed the uh, final exam by Jason, um, Bash returns home, goes home, goes to sleep before his next, before being sent on his next uh, assignment from uh, by Catwoman. However, uh, the Scarecrow gets in and uh, hits him with some fear toxin. So he's a bit edgy. Um, everything seems to be going just fine for Bash and Simpson, but the alarm is tripped. Red Hood shows up, prevents the uh, secure, security guard from uh, doing anything, explaining, hey, look, cameras are shut off. If you just forget this happened, no one will know. Tells Bash and Simpson after, afterwards, especially after Bash, uh, well, Bash is the cop of in the back of the head and almost nearly kills him. Tells them to put their stuff up and uh, go home. Cabin will deal with them both tomorrow. Jason's wanting... Jason is uh, discussing this with uh, Marquise and Dario. Wanted to tell Cabin about it, but... Uh, Dario's not letting him see her, but uh, Catwoman pops out. Gives 
Jason what for about the fact that he is basically doing this for you know utilize he he help he's helping Catwoman for his own agenda. He's not doing it for you know because he believes that what Catwoman's doing doing is right. But uh, Simpson has shown up, but apparently, but no one's he, he's trying to call back, trying to get in touch with Bash, but to no avail. Jason goes to check out Bash's apartment, runs into Stephanie, and finds Bash dead with Get Your Own Toys, Red Hood, written in Bash's blood on the wall. Analysis of the, of the room shows that fear toxin shows traces of fear toxin. Stephanie states that this is bad and with Jason adding that it's about to get much worse. And that is where the issue ends. Interesting start. We, it's been hinted at it between uh, both Batman and Catwoman that uh, the big names, the, the guys who usually employ the henchmen, are banding together to uh, well, remind their usual employees who they who they who they work for. Looks like we're getting the beginning. We're starting to see that uh, play out. Moving on to our next book, we've got Detective Comics number ten seventy four, returning to Gotham Nocturne. So, where we left off. Batman had been infected infected with a uh, um, with one of the organs uh, I can't remember as es, es, or Ismers, and apparently he's going a bit nuts. Various people are reporting seeing him, and at uh, various points. Various points of Gotham, and apparently we get the apparently blew up the roof of a building. Bruce uh, is trying to is trying to uh, regain control of himself. In part through a flashback to uh, watching the sunset with uh, his father. When he was a child, but um, the officer that's tracking Batman was saved by Batman after he a face full of uh, fear toxin. But uh, as I said the Esmer is uh, having effects on Batman. Next is. Uh, the old fairgrounds where Haley Circus stood. Cops are informed of this by uh, Killer Croc, who also uh, was asked about this by uh, the organs. Apparently, Bruce bought the uh, the fairgrounds. Where the Haley Circus had performed when Dick's parents were killed, it was basically a, something for Dick, something that he could have to base kind of a, a means of him to, uh, you know, basically having someplace to come to the way that Bruce has Crime Alley. Afterwards. And Bruce envisions uh, talking to Dick, whether the child and his Nightwing. But uh, much like the vision with his father, does not end well. Barbados helps uh, Batman overcome the 
the asthma, or at least to fight it off. But uh, a report has come in of Batman being seen in Crime Alley. The detective Fielding, the detective tracking Batman down, realizes that's where Thomas and Martha Wayne were killed. We have a backup story, a new one starting up, this time focusing on Ten Eyed Man. The Hole in the Skull of the World. The Ten Eyed Man notes that there's something wrong. He went, there was, there's a pizza, a pizza place that, uh, Pete's Pizza. Um, it's well known that uh, the unfortunate could become the fortunate. For on, on a Friday night, Pete himself would provide pizza to, to those in Gotham who did not have. There was no pizza this time. Ten Eyed Man found Pete and uh, put his finger on Pete's head and saw a hole in his. that had a shape. He accidentally stuck his finger too far into uh, Pete's head, but. Uh, Oops. Took, he took Pete to the hospital where he sought to nurse from uh, using ricin on the uh, or his, or his presence sought to nurse from uh, using ricin on the uh, the newborns. But tonight, man uh, told tells the GCP his story is given a slice of pizza for his troubles, and manages to get out through somehow through the hole. That is where the story ends and the issue ends. Interesting backup story. We've had hints that Barbados was going to be involved in this since uh, the beginning, so not surprising to see him helping Bruce out. It will be interesting to how the whole thing plays out in its entirety by the conclusion. Moving on to our next book, we've got Harley Quinn number 32. Where we left off, uh, Harley had... Uh, Come to an agreement with Lady Quark. Well, yes, she did cause a, inadvertently cause a calamity on a, on another Earth. It wasn't. It was not intentional, and so. But um, if Lady Quark needs her, she was most basically was just drop everything and show up. So. Um, Harley returns home from her visit with Lady Quark, and uh, her and Ivy spent, have a, spent a nice evening together. Um, but she's uh, that day. She's talking. She's at at school talking with her students, preparing them for uh, upcoming finals. When an OMAC shows up. She's being, been summoned by uh, Lady Quark, and so that yes, her students can uh, can come along. They do. Left in the care of the Omax while Lady Quark and, and Harley talk. Lady Quark trying to understand how exactly Harley managed to take the uh, get the fish, so they managed to recreate everything involved. The, meanwhile, Bud and Lou are watching students, realize, noting the, uh, how it seems to be no, no end to uh, their curiosity and, and potentially even creativity. Uh, journeying through, through the multiverse, um, Harley and Lady Quark pass through uh, the underworld of Home of the Restless Dead, not to be confused with hell. And accidentally grab some zomb bring ended up bringing back some zomb bringing some zombies back with them. When they return, the zombies 
attack and uh, Harley comes upon the students realizing that seeing that they've all evolved or at least their brains have evolved um, the device they've created uh, is utilized to stop the, the restless dead to invade and further causing trouble on Lady Court's Earth but the students are have the memory the entire time their entire time they're wiped from their memories and uh, are returned to normal the issue ends with and as also returned to earth to earth prime the issue ends with uh, Harley doing a little bit of shopping when she runs into a uh, she looks Kirby PI multiversal detective Lux is investigating the murder of another Harley. That's where our A story ends. We have a backup story as well. High stakes. On an Earth that uh, appears to be uh, stuck in the Victorian era, Harley has received a mo Harley Quinn has received a marriage proposal. Which shocks her good for her good friend and roommate, Pamela. Reading it over, uh, Harley says it's just some just some joker. Sounds rich and is invited her over. Harley and Ivy go over and well, it's a vampire. Fitting is the art art for the story is done by Kelly Jones, who drew uh, who did the art for the. Uh, Batman, Dracula, Red Rain stories. Not sure this is on that same Earth, but, well. Lots of uh, vampire puns are made. Harley gets turned into a vampire. Turns Ivy as well, and then they uh, they keep uh, her vampiric husband in a, in a hanging cage while uh, a bunch of uh, you well young vampire women uh, cavort it at their feet, and that is where the issue ends. Fun issue. Um, Harley's multiversal adventures are uh, definitely uh, facet intriguing to the least. Moving on, though, to our next book, we've got Penguin, number two. Where we left off, Penguin had been recruit had been uh, recruited out of retirement by Amanda Waller. The intention being that he retakes uh, retakes Gotham on behalf of the wall. So, Penguin uh, is taken to a, a, a nice estate. It is, in fact, the estate of the Help. The Help is a uh, is the henchman. Hen uh, he was introduced in uh, Tom King's Batman Killing Time miniseries. Um, Excellent fight on, fighter on par with Batman. Um, like I said, he is the ultimate henchman, and Penguin has come to hire him. Of course, the help has the help explains he hit, that he is retired. He invites Penguin to stay, stay the night. He will go hunting with him. They do so, and. Uh, The help, Penguin is rather, insult, is rather insulting to the help and gets uh, cracked in the face with the butt of a rifle. The help has a physician on hand, sets, uh, Penguin, who sets Br Penguin's broken nose and is then strangled by the Penguin. The next day, uh, or later in the day, the help is... Uh, 
sparring with a uh, fencing with is having a sparring match, a fencing sparring match. But uh, once again, Penguin asks the help to reconsider for killing the, one of the help's butlers, and then revealing he is in fact poisoned the help's drink. He got the poison from uh, killing the doctor and taking the uh, ingredients for said poison. When the poison wears off, the help comes to him and finds his entire staff in the, in the room with uh, him and Penguin, all dead. Penguin beats the hell out of the help, and then leaves with the help as his driver. And that is where the issue ends. This is building something very interesting, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it, how what it, the final result is, as well as how the uh, now segments, wherein uh, Batman and Penguin are were betrayed and dying, seemingly dying together. Moving on though to our last book for the week, we've got Batman Neo Gothic number three. Where we left off, well, Batman Beyond Neo Gothic. Um, Batman was uh, exploring the uh, Gotham's Undercity, and with the assistance of Kyle the Catboy, they had uh, faced off against King Croc and, and survived and moved further on, though Croc was defending something, defending something for Batman protecting something for him. The Tomb of Owls. What is it that Batman, that, uh, Batman Beyond is uh, doing in the inner city? Looking for missing children. A rash of children, a rash of disappearances have begun happening among children. It turns out that years and years ago, the similar, or the similar rash of disappearances Batman investigated and found a woman who had been who had uh, escaped from a realm of darkness known as the Garden. Batman went in to rescue who he could from the Garden, and uh, the woman who had escaped followed him in. And in order to help, in order to allow Batman to leave, retook her place. The Garden, however, is hungry again. So. Um, while moving into the Tomb of Owls, the Gestalt set lets uh, Batman know that uh, Lumos has, has bought up the Narrows to demolish it and replace it with a City of Light. And Terry and Kyle go down into the tomb, making their way through with. Uh, Batman explaining what he knows of the Court of Owls. Arriving at uh, a room which has what appears to be zombified skeletons of them. They welcome him home and uh, well, they have their own Batman made up of uh, fungi as are in fact the rest of the Court of Owls. Batman fends off Mushroom Batman. Uh, Kyle helps out with some magic. And uh, Terry finally gets Kyle to explain him where he learned magic. From the greatest, from the biggest bastard known to the DC Universe, John Constantine. Which has, which left uh, Kyle with all of uh, John's various curses. Turns out that the reason that Kyle opted to help Batman was to get back at John.
but uh, Batman's guy has managed to uh, take down the quarter valve for the moment, and him and, and him and Kyle go further into the into the deep. He sends a message to uh, to Boom or to Beam that. Uh, I mean, he's telling him on the kids, but he's getting close and you can feel it. But each layer he cuts through has another just beneath it, like scar tissue. It's pure trauma under the streets. All, all the forgotten pain down there to fester. The deeper he gets, the worse the sickness becomes. He doesn't want to choose dark, but he's the only one who can. That is where the issue ends. That's going to do it for this week's roundup. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Big shout out to Patreon patrons Andrew Lee. Thank you so much for your support. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Mastodon, Patreon, Patreon, PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, Live long and rock hard.